Welcome, friends, to this, the Thursday edition of the Grace Hour, broadcasting live here from our studios. Studios are located at the home of the Greater Grace World Outreach in Baltimore, Maryland. Great to have you with us, friends, on this Thursday morning or evening, wherever you may be tuning in and listening to the broadcast. We welcome you to today's uh, Grace Hour edition. My name is Pastor John Love. Joining me in the studio today is Pastor Tom Schaller. We'll be your hosts for the next 45 minutes as we continue our, I think, relevant and important theme, especially in light of an upcoming national election, and that is, of course, politics in the Christian's life. Today, we'll focus on this question, uh, how should my faith affect the way I vote, or should my faith affect the way I vote? And I think it makes perfect sense that our faith is integrated into every every aspect, every part of our lives, including the way we elect our government officials. So I think it's a foregone conclusion that absolutely our faith should affect the way we vote. And we want to, of course, make the most educated uh, vote that we can cast. Uh, but clearly, Pastor Schaller, politics are dominating the headlines as we are just weeks away from electing a new president, as well as members of the House and Senate. Uh, This is a critical time in our nation's history. We've heard that repeatedly over and over again. Um, So this is is a a relevant question and a a relevant theme for believers because I like to think that all believers are going to make their way uh, to their local polling places and cast their votes because it's a right, it's a privilege, and I think it's a great responsibility that we have, too. Yeah, it's a responsibility. I mean, if you take um, your life, you, you know, you have, like, circles. You have your life, your values, and that's yours. Then you have the next circle is, like, your family, friends, your immediate community, then a wider circle and a wider circle. And... Um, and, uh, y- you know, you, you, we are somehow responsible for not only what is in our hearts, but also then what comes out of our mouth. And then um, what, are, what do we believe, you know? Are we honest or dishonest? Um, when we do a business transaction, are we going to be honest or not? And then in our relationships with each other are we going to have integrity righteousness or not and um and we cannot force our values on other people but at the same time we're called we're called to live a certain life a certain way and why not when i have an opportunity to vote for somebody who's going to rule over me he's going to govern that party or that group of people are going to rule over me or bring into our society those things that are important to them, then you could see that the, the importance of being involved in that process because that's going to affect my life, my children, uh, their schooling, their values, uh, what we talk about in schools, uh, what, what um, is um, uh, important to us. And so why wouldn't I vote and be involved in that process? Because uh, it's going to affect my life mm. on the outside. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, our, the future uh, as well, mm. and what happens down the road. As you mentioned, our children, even our grandchildren. So there really is a lot at stake. Um, what, what, what would our attitude be towards those who encourage believers, um, no, don't even bother to vote? Um, even in some instances, they go so far as to suggest that it is sinful to vote because you are voting for imperfect candidates, sinful people. Um, that, th- that seems a little foolish that mm-hmm. we would, mm-hmm. you know, pass on our responsibility. And then of course, what right would we have to uh, say how bad things are when we didn't even bother casting a vote to begin with? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, the platform. 
you want to know what is the party representing? Do they have the same values that you have? And the, the platform of the party that you're voting for is the critical thing. It's like, no, people, people aren't perfect, but what are they promoting on their party? What's their platform? Yeah. That, that's more the issue, you know? Like, uh, I don't know, you, you could dramatize by saying that Hitler was voted in 1933, but did they know what the platform was? What's the Nazi party? What's the platform of the party? Well, then they, kn they knew that. And then he's voted in. And, uh, well, like uh, 10 years later, 12 or 14 years later, when the whole thing is over, uh, what did they think about that? Like, what, what, is there any, like, self-evaluation? And would you have, an American, would you, if you had been in that situation, had done anything differently? And, I mean, and you say, I didn't vote. Well, you didn't vote when a very, uh, you know, very racist party took over the government of the, of the country and you didn't vote. Did you know what they were voting for, what that party represented, and do you know what, where it was going? And, and, um, and so we should uh, look at that. And, you know, it's so funny that hardly anybody talks about that. Right. But there, there's a good example of like, okay, you didn't vote because there wasn't any, any party. Is that correct? That, that you were, were well, ready to support? And so you supported the Nazi party? And uh, is there, uh, do you realize what happened because of your indifference? And, uh, and then, of course, worse, voting for the party when you knew as a Christian that it was a racist party. Wow. <laughs> when you, what? When you, yeah, when you couch yeah. it in that language, it's like, that's, that's so true. Yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of a phrase a pastor uh, used to say to us often um, up in New York City that n neutrality is, is criminality. Okay. How can we be neutral when it comes to these issues? Yeah. How can we say, uh, well, I'm not going to cast a vote because uh, they're sinful? Well, it, I mean, it wouldn't matter if you found what you considered to be the most impeccable person on the planet. They would still be a sinner. Mm -hmm. Sinners are, are going to rule our nation. Yes. Uh, but again, it goes back to being educated and informed about just what it is that they believe and what their platform stands for. Yes, yes, yes. So to be educated about this is so important because there are a lot of people, we mentioned this a moment ago before the program began, but, you know, Taylor Swift has come out recently and basically are, she and her boyfriend are telling people who to vote for. Mm -hmm. um, they're using their influence to potentially influence the outcome of an election. Sure. Well, why couldn't we, um, as believers, and using even this platform, the Grace Hour, encourage our listeners to become as informed and as educated as they possibly can become before they go to the voting booth? Well, we do that. Yeah, we, yeah you're right. We we do that. We want. Uh, uh, we have sanctity of life. Uh, that is one of the issues in the platform. The parties are different on that point. Um, uh, spending, more uh, control of the money and the spending. And uh, it used to be back in the Ronald Reagan era with the balanced budget amendment. There was a, even a, an attempt at that. And uh, uh, so money is important. Um, but to go back to the point about... Um, about our society, oh, yes, people in Hollywood promote, uh, they, they are uh, not neutral, but they are uh, promoting a candidate. And then the Christian church, uh, we, instead of talking about a candidate, we are talking about the party. And I think that's important, you know, that that we would know, we would be informed. Now, in um, the Douglas-Lincoln debates, 1858 or 59, uh, when Lincoln and Douglas had these famous debates that went by telegraph wire around the country to the newspapers, and people were reading papers 
Uh, people were getting informed, and they knew exactly where Lincoln was standing. And that's why when he was elected, the South seceded from the Union, you know. And um, it me- meaning that uh, that people were informed, and the issues were not as simple. They were complex. And the slavery issue and uh, states' rights issues were were at the heart of the of the election, the the controversy, the battle. But just to say that um, if if we are not engaged and informed, then we can run with the herd and do what maybe is popular, but not what is wise. I mean, you mentioned about the political parties. They, they matter, and you have to take a, a good, hard look at them because they're either going to represent your core beliefs as, mm. a, as a Christian, mm. um, and you have to look at the values that they represent and, and their party represents. Um, so, again, all of this matters, and mm. it's very and it's critically important to us. Um, some people have a more superficial determination when it comes to casting their vote. You know, do I like this person? Yeah, uh, yeah of course. What do they look like? Yeah, they, right. You know, are they nice people? Yes. All of that really shouldn't be brought into the, the final decision when you cast that ballot. No, yeah, yes, that's correct. I mean, um, there should be issues um, that... Well, added to the problem, too, is lying, okay, misrepresenting the propaganda. But when the issues have real substance and you read, you can go to the the two parties that we have in our country and um, you can read their statements and discern and recognize the difference and vote and be involved in the process because uh, I'm, I'm responsible. I'm, my, my country actually is calling upon me to, um, ma- to s- make a statement. And when one uh, party is uh, standing for this and the other one for another one, another position, then um, I should uh, pray and I should be involved in the process and I should vote. Mm. And you mentioned um, about the sanctity of life, that being an, an important and crucial issue for us, the character and the integrity of the candidates themselves. Uh, what about you know biblical marriage? Because there are we have candidates that are supporting same-sex marriage. Mm-hmm. I mean that that's a clear violation of biblical truth and biblical mm. principles. Yes. And for for me to go to the voting booth and cast a ballot for someone who so uh, diametrically opposes what the Bible teaches, that's kind of frightening. Yeah, sure. And, and I mean, uh, uh, enough has happened in the last four years that we see where things go. The transgender uh, movement, uh, I mean, sex changes by surgery and hormone replacement, and then you have... Uh, which are very radical ideas. Then you have um, uh, the critical race theory, which is like a form of Marxism, but not class distinction by economy, but by race, and fomenting the division between people. I mean, I have very clear can, you know, views on it. And if one, uh, maybe you could be, somebody could be liberal in their spending and would like maybe more of a socialist agenda, but then you have enough evidence on the other side where you have, um, uh, you know, serious uh, uh, issues of, of, um, of a moral nature. Yeah, so... so you know, I think we've said we said enough. Could you say, Pastor uh, Love, what um, what you what what do you have any statistics? I know we have some papers here in front of us, but about about Christians not voting. Um, I don't have any statistics. I mean, I I know that it it happens, and I think I think 
what we hear in the media is that there are large portions of evangelical Christians around the country that that do not vote. Yes. And many have suggested that if they did vote, their voting block would be uh, powerful and could make a big difference in the outcome of both local and uh, state and national elections. So again, I mean, if there were ever a time for believers to stand up and say, I want to make my vote count, uh, it's now. And I think this idea of somebody suggesting to others or thinking this way themselves, what, how is my one vote going to make a difference? Well, if you look back in our nation's history, I, my understanding it was one vote that determined that you and I would be speaking German today as opposed to English. One vote decided that. So to say or to suggest that it doesn't matter simply isn't the case. Mm -hmm. um, we all have that responsibility to make that kind of a difference. And if we can make that kind of a difference and have a country that you know, has some security as far as its national security, some freedom uh, to continue to preach the gospel, because today we have that freedom. But who's to say that in four, eight, 12 years, that freedom couldn't be jeopardized mm -hmm. if we don't cast the right vote? It is possible. I'm not saying that that's what's at stake in this election, but somewhere down the road, we could be facing that reality. I do have a, a statement here. It says, in the USA, in recent elections, about two of every five of self-professed Christians did not vote. Two of five, okay. About one in five uh, self-professed Christians, eligible Christians, are not registered to vote. So one in five is quite a bit, right? That's huge. It's about 20%. Yeah. 20% um, of Christians are not registered to vote. Mm. So that could uh, make a big difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Yep. But So why wouldn't I uh, b realize, be, be provoked to um, have an opinion on the issue? Because these are the people that are going to de decide the agenda for our country. And we just went through four years of, like, you know, a, a administration <laughs> where we yeah. see their agenda, yeah. what they were doing all these four years, and, uh, and I'm not satisfied. So mm -hmm. um, we, we, let's go look at when, uh, what the differences are between the two parties. Um, we have sanctity of life, the abortion issue, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Same-sex marriage or civil unions is promoted with the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Freedom for religious speech, all right? That's important. I, I don't know that in, that is at stake here. What else do we have, Pastor? National security um, okay. as, as a nation. I mean, how, what, what is our status in the world today? Um, mm. You know, are we able to protect ourselves as a nation, or even our friends, if if they were call, if we were called upon to help to defend them? Um, we're looking at two major conflicts currently that we're involved in that have happened during this previous administration mm. under the Biden Harris administration. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, you know, where what, where do we stand nationally? What, what about the border? Mm. Like talk about national security, and and we just saw years of an open border, people mm -hmm. pouring. Is there any question about that? And that one party is saying close the border, and the other one is not. Like so, and then how does that affect our national security? Oh, it impacts it greatly because you don't know who's coming through those borders. Uh, is it possible that terrorists could find their way through these open borders? It is possible. Not suggesting that that's the case, but there's a lot of talk about, you know, uh, foreign agents that have, you know, anti-American agenda to coming into our country without even being questioned to determine what their background is like. So mm -hmm. this is happening. And the, the border czar, which was uh, the, the current vice president now running for president, 
never visited the border, never mm-hmm. saw the reality of what was happening mm-hmm. there. And when questioned about it, you know what her answer was? Well, I went to Europe. Mm. That's, yeah. that's what her answer was. And that's yeah. kind of uh, frightful. It's kind of shocking. Mm. And yet at the, on the other hand, we have a party that is crying out and saying our borders have to be protected because we have seen upwards to what 20 million um, immigrants come into our country. Mm-hmm. Now, again, I think you and I, we're all for being a nation that's made up of immigrants. That's always been the case. But to just open the borders yeah. and so that people can come into this country without determining if they are criminals uh, mm-hmm. or have any kind of contacts or, with terrorist activities, it's, yeah. it's unimaginable. Or if, or if we can afford to, um, you know, have them here. Yeah. We can afford medical care, education, housing, everything, you know. You, you know in the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, there were quotas on immigration mm-hmm. at Ellis Island, people coming in. There were quotas. There were, you just couldn't come, you know. Yeah. So um, there were numbers. So uh, how about uh, the whole idea of giving money away? Well, I mean, from my, my understanding, that's always kind of been a, a, an earmark of the Democratic Party. Yeah. Um, problems, they, they believe problems are solved in our society and in our culture with more money. And, and to do that, you have to have more taxation. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and what that creates, of course, is a greater sense of deficit, which we're dealing with, and we're going to have our children, grandchildren, their grandchildren dealing with it as well. So it's, it's something that has to stop. You know, there's that, there's that sign in um, midtown Manhattan, Times Square, and it's the, the number of, of the current U.S. deficit, and it just keeps rising moment by moment, and it just doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a pretty serious issue. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go to the Scripture and just talk about uh, what does the Scripture say regarding... Um, Leadership. There's a proverb 29. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Mm. When the righteous are in authority. So, uh, wh- which party has a stronger sense of right and wrong and are able to look at something that is wrong and say it is wrong and not be afraid of losing votes? Mm-hmm. You know, which party has a stronger sense of moral conviction? Which, which one is more morally grounded? Well, well, people don't like that. It would be morally grounded. I would like to be more like just do anything you want to. It just it doesn't matter. Everybody's a good person. Everybody is, um, you know, righteous or everybody is like doing their best or they're living their life. Just leave them alone. Let them live whatever way they want to. But one party is saying, yes, we understand that. But no, there is actually right and wrong. Yeah. I mean, I I could give an opinion of what that party is. But we want our listeners to answer that question, don't we? Yeah. Uh, We want them to do the research. We want them to look at what's being said and what's being communicated on a regular basis and don't necessarily look at the media for answers to those questions. Don't necessarily turn to the media because you might not get correct answers. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, there's sure. a lot of falsehood now, and we know this, yes. that's being propagated by the media. Because I think the media has their own agenda. And oh, the media, yeah. the media say they would like to have their candidate in office. Well, okay, they get a vote too. But they shouldn't be the people that are influencing our votes. We should get our information from the candidates themselves and an understanding of their platforms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So what, you know, what does it mean, righteous? Well, there's somebody that's standing for right and wrong. And of course, in our, you know, we, we have had Republican presidents that kind of represent that kind of leadership. They will stand for what is right. And if, if, um, if hell comes against them, they still stand 
for what is right. And the, the two that come to my mind are Abraham Lincoln, and that, that was what we loved about him. He would say slavery is wrong. The country, would be div- the country was divided. There was a terrible civil war, but it was wrong, and he stood for that. So when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Mm-hmm. And that, that's more of what I'm looking for, like not the candidate again, but the party that was willing to say this is wrong. Teddy Roosevelt is the other one when he stood against the— uh, monopolies and broke those uh, monopolies and was saying what was right and wrong at the at an expense you know at an expense is it with some courage and fiber in his soul so that's that means something to me like that's what that's the way it is the righteous when the righteous are in authority people rejoice but then what do you think about this pastor but when, well, when the wicked rule the people mourn. Mm. They will. They will ultimately mourn because of the decisions that are made at the highest levels of government. I, I, I love the idea that we would have someone in the White House who is God-fearing. Mm. I love the idea we have someone in the White House who would turn to God for critical and important decisions that need to be made regarding our nation and the world, for that matter. Yeah, we all remember Ronald Reagan. Absolutely. He would have, uh, he, he would say, let us take a moment of silent prayer. So then there was, a, you know, a moment, everybody's quiet, and you pray whatever way you want to pray, mm-hmm. but at least it was respect to God, you know, and yeah. he's a, he's another Republican who stood, and and on principle. That's a, this is the thing that I'm talking about. Where is the principles with the Democratic Party? Mm-hmm. Is it just to to give money away and win votes and be in power, and stay in power? Mm-hmm. And is that is that what what why is their platform the way it is? Is it to please people and make, you know, to everybody just to live as you want to? Well, then it says that when there is, you know, immoral living, it, it, it weighs on people and they mourn. Mm-hmm. And there are, there are governments through our history of the world where uh, ruthless Tyrants, empowered people uh, have produced like tremendous pain on people, Mm -hmm. oppressing people that disagree with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it used to be in our country would say, well, I disagree with you, but I will defend your right to have your opinion. And that is uh, what, you know, we should we should be saying today not hating each other, but caring about each other. But we can be different, but we don't hate each other. Amen. Yeah. Um, if Jesus called us to be the salt and the light of the world, um, I think that that includes exercising our right to vote. Mm. That is one way that we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world by taking that opportunity and exercising our stewardship, because I think that's what it is. It's a responsibility um, as a member of this nation to, to exercise that right. It's mm-hmm. good stewardship before God. Mm-hmm. And I, I would take issue with, with a leader of a congregation, a pastor that would say you know, to his congregation, You're, you know, don't bother voting. We're talking about putting imperfect, sinful. Well, I know we are, but last time we checked, Jesus was not on the ballot. So (laughs) that's not going to happen. But can we find people that have these convictions that this set of beliefs is going to guide them and ultimately serve to guide the nation in the future? And that's Mm -hmm. that's where I would want to cast my vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So uh, when the righteous are in authority... The people rejoice because there is right and wrong, and they feel they can be, they have grounds. There's a law. They can go to the law. 
and uh, justice can be served out. But when the wicked rule uh, is somebody getting bribed, uh, are they bending the law? Are they looking for a loophole? Are you going to go to jail? The people mourn. The king, by judgment, excuse me, establishes the land, but he that receives gifts overthrows it. If a ruler listens to lies, all his servants are wicked. So uh, it's, it's a big calling to be a leader and to have a sense of righteousness in your heart and to stand on that ground. Mm. And I, I read in an article that one of the reasons why many Christian leaders are silent on the voting issue is fear. And, and let me just share this one story. Pastor Jack Hibbs of the Calvary Chapel in Chino Hills in California recently spoke out on behalf of California U.S. Republican Senate candidate Steve Garvey, told his congregation God wants them to support a pro-life candidate. Well, when he did that, the Freedom From Religion Foundation soon released a statement noting that they will be asking the IRS to ensure that Pastor Hibbs Church no longer receives the benefits of a 501c3 status and that donations made to his church are no longer treated as tax deductible. Why? Because he made that comment from his pulpit. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the culture yeah. that we live in today. Well, it came from Lyndon Johnson, actually, that idea of uh, separating uh, that if you... But, but then he ran into trouble with black churches, because if you remember, there was like a political uh, movement. You had uh, J Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton using black churches to um, propagate their party, the party they were representing, their, their direction. And in that case, uh, they, don't, they, they, they don't find issue with it. But if you if you go to the other if you are uh, you know if you if you fall into a different category uh, then they may say that, yeah. but I don't know that it'll hold up. Yeah, yeah, in court I don't know that. I know. Can if we represented a can if we uh, okay if a if a liberal church is representing the Democratic Party. And they do that. Do they lose their status? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very good question. It's almost like everybody is free to do or say whatever they want to unless you're part of the evangelical community. Yeah. Then there's a price that you'll have to pay. Well, you know, I mean, we're talking about all of these important factors when it comes to who we should vote for. Uh, but that list does not include things like, well, who do I like more, <laughs> right? Yeah. Who would I most want to have a cup of coffee with, right? Or who is m most like me or looks most like me? None of those factors yes. should come into play when we're thinking about casting our vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you know... They, they've done studies on this and in the world of television and, you know, would Abraham Lincoln been elected president, you know, because, you know, to his own and people talk that he wasn't the best looking kind of a guy, mm -hmm. but uh, he had what it took. Yeah. And that that shows how wrong we could be by looking for the Hollywood image or, you know, somebody that isn't that attractive, uh, but they have the skill set and the ability to be a great leader. But the popular, popular vote uh, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, elect him. Mm, it's incredible. Well, our, our cities, our, our state, our nation needs us to take this responsibility seriously. So we could even say to those that are listening today, if you are not registered to vote, you should. I, I, mm. I like to think you still have time to do that Sure. Uh, with a national election right around the corner now. Oh, yeah, illegal immigrants will be going to vote. Why <laughs> can't you? So. That's right. You're a, a member of your this country. Just go driver's license. You got a driver's license. Yeah. Go do it. Absolutely. So to answer the question, what does America need in this hour that we find ourselves living in? We could almost say America needs you personally uh, to be praying 
to be voting, to be engaged, to be informed, to get educated, and so much more because uh, this next national election is going to impact all of us. As some people say, well, it's only going to impact me, you know, in, in, in my, uh, my bank account, my wallet, my pocketbook. Now, it's going to impact us in far greater ways than just economically. That certainly is a concern, but there are a lot of other concerns as well, mm -hmm, especially absolutely. as believers that we... Financially, yes. of course, people vote by their pocketbook, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. It's a big deal. Look at where we are financially. I mean, our, our money has lost a lot of value in the last four years. Mm -hmm. There's also, uh, you know, COVID. We were shut down as a church. That's right. Do you think that the government could close down churches? I mean, if it happened with a pandemic, I mean, what other reason would there be? Is there a possibility of World War III? And who do you want to be leading? Which party do you want to be in control or leading the country when there is a world war? Yeah. I mean, that's a serious question. I know. If, if there was a world war, and there could be, mm. who do you want leading our country? It's, yes. <laughs> Uh, Are you going to vote or not? Yeah. If you don't vote, that that's you know, like doesn't make sense to us. Yeah. Like you, you vote. It, we, we, it's important. It yeah. sure is. Yes, and we we trust and we hope and pray that many of you that are listening to us today will take that responsibility seriously, because it's part of our stewardship. We have this great right to do so under our constitution. So let's exercise our right because it's a privilege. And, you know, whether or not the candidate that we choose personally is elected, that's not the issue. Uh, we don't know that yet. We don't know. The end. But we also know this, that whatever candidate is elected, it doesn't change the fact that we have a responsibility to continue to walk by faith, to trust God, and to seek first his kingdom. When we do that, um, even when the candidate of our choice is not elected, we still have great hope in our hearts, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. Our kingdom is not of this world. Amen. But while we're in it, let's do our duty. Yeah. Amen. Pray for our leaders. Yep. Love our neighbors. Share the message. And do good works. Amen. Well, friends, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, our program has come to a conclusion, but we certainly appreciate you tuning in. And uh, we hope that we have helped to educate you a little bit more in preparation of an upcoming election. Um, this series on the Grace Hour will continue tomorrow, the Friday edition of our broadcast, Politics in the Christian Life. And tomorrow on the Grace Hour, we'll talk about how we should render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So tune in tomorrow for the last broadcast in this theme and subject this week. Thanks so much for joining us today. Until tomorrow, have a great day.